I'm Dump Truck DS. Welcome back to Mapping for Quake. This is part two in a multi-part series on my workflow. If you haven't seen part one, make sure and stop this now and go back to part one because it's kind of crucial to do this in order. So on to the next step, which is gameplay. Now, the best thing about this part of the process is you can iterate very quickly. Since most of the geometry for the level is at least in a rough state, you don't have to do a full compile every time you wanna make changes to the gameplay. So as long as you don't move any brushes or create any brushes, you can use the dash only ents command line switch in QBSP, and then you can just make changes to the gameplay and compile your map very quickly. So I want to stop right here for a sidebar. When you are iterating your level, just rendering your map with QBSP by itself, it can be pretty ugly as you can see here. There's a way that you can add a little bit of shadowing to your map by adding a command line switch to light dash dirt debug. Now you can see a difference between just running QBSP here and dirt debug here. So if you want this look, you run qbsp.exe and light.exe, but add dash dirt debug to light. Using this method, when you're ready to iterate on gameplay only, you'll need to run both qbsp and light with the command line switch dash only ends. So after this, if you're compiling and you're having problems and your map turns out to be weird colors or just completely black lighting. The answer to this would be to delete the .lit file from your working directory and your map directory, then recompile and everything should be okay. So I'm making progress. I've added a lot more monsters and a couple secrets and what else? Some ammo. Uh, and so now I start play testing the rough gameplay. This takes a while because you want to try to balance it and this is where the fun happens. So uh, this is the time that you want to, to, to really focus on the quality of the gameplay. Where I'm at right now is I've, I've, I'm on the next step, which is basically the ceiling step. And um, in this case, since it's a large outdoor area, it's just one simple brush on the top of the whole big box here. Um, so that went really quickly <laughs> for that uh, section. What I would normally do if it was a more intricate map with more, you know, different rooms, since this is one big room, it's quite a bit different. But normally I would do uh, take some time and the ceiling step would take a while. The next step is usually detailing the map followed by lighting. But in this case, I decided to switch things up. Because this is one giant area where the skylight has so much of an impact on it, I've decided to go ahead and start the lighting in this, you know, ahead of detailing. Detailing is things like, you know, putting trim over here, which I've already started. Again, this is a, this workflow is a loose uh, guideline. And sometimes you're just kind of like, well, I just want to put some detail to see what that's going to look like. Um, you know, or basically my mind is fried and I'm tired of doing kind of creative, the creative part, and I just want to do kind of a more mechanical thing. So I go out of order. Now, the first step in lighting a large level like this, for me anyway, is to do the skylight. So I've put the sky in, and then I put one light. You actually enable this with underscore sun and then set that to one, and that becomes the skylight. You target an info null so that you can change the direction the sun is pointing. All right, so no target, no clip. I'm gonna fly around. I actually like this a little better than what I had. Oh yeah, much better than it was. Let's see. I'm trying to avoid really significant hot spots and kind of have a lot of shadow. There's a lot of messy stuff right there. I can fix that. Ooh, I like this a lot better. I'm glad I tried this. The next stage of my lighting uh, kind of method here is to do surface lights. So basically with uh, Eric W's tools, you can assign a light value to a surface. And so everywhere that surface is in the map, will it's sort of like having a light. This is the initial light. You only need one of these in the level. And you set all your lighting settings. So I've been messing around with this for the last few minutes and I've got a, a value that I like. And so now all I have to do is I have this little kind of prefab light and I can put that all around the level. So that's the next step. So now you can see I've placed a lot more of these surface lights and I'll tweak some of these 
and uh, not all of them are going to look great uh, for each individual area, but um, it's a start and it's a real time saver. So I've created a lot more prefab lights now. I've got these large plinths over here on the side of the walkways and these, uh, just these guys here. So these are light sources that I create and then just, uh, you know, make into a, a group and a prefab, basically a prefab and copy and paste them around the map. Gives a little more flavor, definitely more light. Um, not perfect, but it, they work. And again, speed map, so just kind of down and dirty. So what I have here are um, accent lights for items. So I put a little light, I, I don't know what the values are, right? I think it's 300 and with a weight of four, I could be wrong, I'm, I'll have to, we'll look in a second. And I've put them on the power-ups on the ground near the power-ups, I'm gonna keep doing that, I haven't finished yet. But that is another step in lighting where you wanna have your items lit so that players can see them. Uh, the important, you know, things like buttons and things like that. So that's another stage of my lighting process. So for items, I put them really close to the ground. Oh, hello. Put them really close to the ground. Yeah, it's a 300 light with a, a weight of four, and that's it. And you just, with models, you know, the, the models will take the light that they are given. Well, these are full bright, but uh, like the, the nail gun wasn't lit up. It was um, pitch black. So we needed to give it some light. So now we're on to detailing the map. And uh, this is where you can spend a lot of time making things, you know, perfect and pretty. In this case, because this is a speed map, I am not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because I have already spent way too much time on this map. So I'm doing just texturing and trim work, uh, fixing issues aligning textures. I'm not gonna be able to align every texture in this map because it just was so willy-nilly. Uh, but detailing is part of, you know, also making things clear to the player. So I wanna have signposts that direct the player to areas that might be a bit confusing. I watched my oldest son play through the map yesterday and he wasn't quite sure what he should do at this point. Uh, he's like, well, I could go to the teleporter and where's that gonna take me? Well, I've made it very clear now. But I also want players to understand that they have two routes. So um, I've put these little illusionary kind of decals on the ground. And here's a perfect example of detailing. Um, so I'll set this to grid 32, and I'm gonna select these brushes here, and I'm just gonna put this um, riveted texture here. So I'm gonna Clip those and um, do this around the whole side. The last step in the process is refining the level. And this is the point where you really, it's very important to have play testers playing the map and giving you feedback. If you start to see trends like uh, this area is too dark or um, or I couldn't find the last key and I, I got confused. You know, if you start seeing trends where multiple people are saying the same things, you have to stop and fix those problems. It's also a good idea to have multiple play testers and make sure they're playing the level for the first time. You know, it's fine to have someone go back and revisit it, but it's, it's also good to have fresh eyes on it as much as possible before you release the map to the public. This is the part when we get closer to being finished with the map where you're doing all different things. You're doing some brushwork, you're doing lighting, you're refining gameplay. Uh, this is my process. So I start playing through it and as I go, uh, like the, the ending message there or the beginning message there, uh, getting a feel for the gameplay. Still a lot of texture work and detailing to be done. This is the phase where there's a lot of troubleshooting and finding bad lighting and things like that that I need to fix before moving on. <laughs> well, I guess that ends that test. So that is my workflow, basically in 10 steps. And of course, it's just a guideline. Again, you can work differently, everyone works differently. But if you're new to mapping, you can try this method and uh, see how it works for you. So there will be a part three to this video where I play through the map and uh, give a post-mortem 
based on some observations that I saw after the map was released and people were streaming and recording demos. So stay tuned for that one. And until then, thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next video.